All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this verbaling class with me. It's teacher Amy, and we're going to be doing a reading class today. So um, our topic is an interesting article, and it's entitled The World's Most Endangered Food. And food isn't something that you typically think of as being endangered, I don't think. Um, generally use that word in regards to animals, but it appears that some of our food is actually on its way out, so to speak. So we're going to be reading an article about what food is possibly disappearing from our plates. Um, we're going to be practicing our reading skills and our pronunciation skills and also learning some vocabulary, I hope. So if you want to practice your reading, um, it's going to be a fun class, it's an interesting article, um, it's not too challenging, but there should be some vocab for you to learn, and it should be a good class. So come along in. I think there's a couple of slots left if you're interested in participating. So before we begin, as always, I'd just like to tell you about my two important verbling-related pages on the Internet. So the first one is my Facebook page, um, which is really handy for getting in touch with me. Um, and also seeing what I post about various classes. Um, sometimes we discuss things after class, so it's a good thing to keep a, a note of that. Um, like me on Facebook, and then you can just be connected whenever you'd like. And then we've got my Verbling Teach page, which gives you a bit more information about um, logistical things such as my calendar, my class timetable, upcoming classes, who I am. Um, so it might be worth having a look at, at that and... Um, Seeing, seeing what's there and finding out a bit more about me. So, now that we've covered all that, just a reminder, this is mostly a reading and um, pronunciation class. So we'll be practicing on pronunciation on our reading skills and hopefully also learning some vocabulary along the way. So let's hi say hi to our students and see who we've got today. And I'll say firstly hello to Janine. Hello. Hello. Hello, Janine. It's good to meet you. I've never met you before, right? Yeah, it's good to meet you too. It's my first class today. Welcome. Is it your first class with me or your first class on Verbling? My first class at all. Wow, well welcome. It's good to have you on Verbling. Okay, thank you. <laughs> if you have any questions about anything, just ask, okay? So we'll okay. see if we can help you out. And welcome. It's good to have you in the class. Where are you from, Janine? I am from Brazil, from mm -hmm. Rio. In Rio. Oh. I really want to go to Rio. I yeah. really wish I could go to Brazil, actually. It just looks very cool. Um, you will be how long have... Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully one day I will be able to. Um, and how, how long have you been learning English for? Um, just a few months. I'm trying to speak. But I used to practice my reading and my writing. Excellent. Oh, well, it's... it's um, very good to have you, and for a couple of months you're doing well. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, who else do we have? Julio, hello. Hello, teacher. How are you today? Not too bad, not too bad. Not too bad. How are those idioms going? Um, our last class, you probably gave me the most idioms I've ever had from one student in, in a class. <laughs> are you still working on them? Yeah, definitely. I'm working on them, and uh, well, I'm I'm trying to improve. I think it's important if you want to sound not like a native speaker, but definitely more natural. And there are some meanings that you can only grasp when you say it in an idiom. That's a so. very true, Julio. Congratulations, because I know that it's difficult. Yeah, yeah. Um, we just have so many idioms. <laughs> Yeah, but they're a lot of fun, yeah. They are quite fun, that's true. Yeah. Um, I found it fun learning idioms in Spanish. And also seeing whether we had similar ones, you know, because often languages do have similar ones. They express the same thing maybe in, with different words. It's quite fun. So anyway, welcome to the class. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello also to Krishan. Hello, teacher. Hello, good to meet you. Am I saying your name correctly? Yes. Good, okay. So where are you from, Krishna? Yeah, I'm from India. From India? Wow, I don't think I've had a student from India before. Whereabouts in India? From New Delhi. Pardon? From New Delhi. This is the capital of India. Oh, New Delhi. New Delhi. Sorry. Um, 
All right, great. How long have you been learning English for? Yeah, uh, I was active on uh, uh, I was active on Verbling on uh, month of February, but I couldn't I couldn't take your class mm -hmm. uh, after in March and uh, after I was quite busy, so I uh, I didn't take class. But now I am uh, again active on Verbling. All right, well, welcome. It's good to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, let's say hi to Mauricio as well. Yes. Good night. Good evening. Good evening, Amy. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Mauricio. Where are you from? I'm from the beautiful, wonderful, exciting, and amazing Colombia. <laughs> <laughs> I have lots of students from. Well, I have a few, let's say, and they all love their country. I'm so pleased to hear that. It's great to have you, Mauricio. Are you in the capital or in another part? Yes, I live in Bogota. And I've heard that it's a really nice place to live. Do you agree? Totally agree. And you are very welcome to visit us. Excellent. I'll put you on the map after I go to Brazil. That's a great uh, travel. How do you say that? A great trip. <laughs> Sorry. A great trip. All around South and Central America. That was what I would love to do. Absolutely. Um, so I'll stop off and, and see you, Mauricio, OK? Yes, for sure. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome to the class, and nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you. Um, hello to Raphael. Hi, Amy. Hi. You're still going, Raphael. You're still studying. Still. Never stops. Yeah. You keep going. Keep going. Persevere. We were talking about that the other day. Hey. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, yes. Did you get your writing back from me? I sent you a message. Yes, yes, I, I got it. Excellent. All right. Um, so, everybody, it's good to meet those of you I haven't met before. And um, I'm just going to explain, uh, explain sorry, briefly how this will work. Um, we're going to be reading the article together. So we'll take it in turns. Um, and you guys will read out um, a paragraph or two, and I'll tell you when to stop. So I would like you to try to focus as much as you can on giving me your best reading. Um, and after you've finished your section, we'll pause so that I can correct you if you've made any particular pronunciation errors, um, but also to talk about vocabulary. Um, if there's words that we don't understand, we'll go through them together. So in the chat box, you can see the link there. If you'd like to click on it and load it in your own window, go ahead. And I'm going to do a screen share so that we can all see what we're doing together. Um, so this is from the BBC Future website, which has some cool articles um, about futuristic stuff, I guess. Um, and this article is, as you know, called The World's Most Endangered Food. So the word endangered is pretty important. Is there that anyone can tell me um, what does endangered mean? And danger means that it's uh, in danger. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right, Julio. <laughs> in danger of what? Sorry, I missed that part. Uh, disappear or yes. become extinct. Exactly. In danger of becoming or becoming extinct or disappearing. Um, so if something goes extinct, what does that mean? That you will never see it in the face of the earth once again. Exactly. It, it will disappear from the face of the earth. Um, so the dinosaurs, for example, went extinct. Um, I don't think they were endangered. I think, well, we don't know what happened to them, do we? Um, but they definitely are extinct now. And um, there is apparently some food that is going the same way. So you can see here a lovely picture of an empty refrigerator with one apple in it. <laughs> um, let's have a look at the caption. Um, and Julio, since you're talking, would you mind reading the caption for us, please? This is, well, this isn't actually a caption, excuse me. This is just like a little introductory sentence. This one here. Would you read it for us, please, Julio? Sure, sorry. Many varieties of food 
meat and vegetable are disappearing from our plates, says Rachel Newer. Why is why is this happening and can we stop the rot? Okay, thank you, Julia. Right, so before we even start reading this article, did anyone know that um, some foods were going extinct in our world? Did anyone already know that? I don't know anything. Nope, I didn't know either, Janine. I thought it was kind of strange. I knew that animals were going extinct, but I did not know food was. Um, so it's kind of an interesting thing to read and to find out which foods are changing, so to speak. Um, does yeah. anyone have any problems with yes? Who is going to speak then? Me. I think I think I know. I mean, it's not like disappearing, but now you can only see those ones in a blue moon. Mm -hmm. uh, it is like um, real milk, like real milk from the cow. From the yeah. cow. Yeah. You can. I remember that when I was a child, we were able to buy this milk from garages that were like passing uh, by and they were selling real meal from real cows uh -huh. and now we don't see them anymore you just have to buy your milk like in this in the supermarket this milk that comes in a cardboard box yeah. not natural at all that's a good point Julio actually I don't think I've ever had actual milk straight from the cow so there you go um, is there anything else that anyone else remembers that they used to have to eat but don't have any longer? Could I say could I say that the food have been modified in yeah, their structure? Sure. In their structure, yeah. I mean, uh, modified by chemicals mm -hmm. or genetically. Yep. So they are not the same as Julio said. Is not is not natural now nowadays nowadays. It's, uh, uh, for example, c corn, the corn or soja, soja or soja. Soya, yeah. So soya, they are not, they are not the same. So uh, I think that 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 already ex uh, that is, that they are already extincted, ex extinct. Yeah, absolutely. So natural or the original corn and soy or soya have disappeared kind of strange, hey, and it doesn't seem like we've got much of a choice about that. Um, if we buy it from the supermarket, well, the companies produce it, I guess. So we're going to find out a bit about that. So I'm going to ask, first of all, Janine, if you can start us off with reading the first paragraph and a little bit more, actually. So from the Svalbard Global Seed Vault, please. Okay. Um, the Svalbard of board global seed vault could be mistaken for a set piece from a futuristic Stanley Kubrick film. It turns out of the side of the mountain in Svalbard. Um, a remote Norway, I don't know how to pronounce that. Norwegian. Norwegian. Archipelago located near the North Pole and in the eternal darkness of the high North's winter. It glows on early pale blue. It's doing those cold moths that scientists choose to load the precious cargo into the vault. The seeds of 825,000 crop plants and counting. A little bit more, Janine, please. Also calls the, dooms, the Doomsday Vault. The facility is designed as a safe guard against those plants' extinction, many of them essential food. In principle, these crops could prevent humanity demise to the global catastrophe occur. Thank you, Janine. Great reading. Um, let's have a look at a couple of little words. So this one here was Norwegian. Okay, Norwegian. Excellent. This one is archipelago. Archipelago. Yes. Or archipelago. Archipelago. Yeah, it's easier. Yeah. All right. 
This one here is the number, so we have to say 825 separate, and then you add on the 1,000, so it's 825,000. Okay. Um, and then the last one, this word here, you just need to, to emphasize the E sound a little bit more so that I can tell it's these and not this, for example. So, these. These. Perfect. And the last one is occur. Occur. Thank you, Janine. Great. All right, so let's have a talk about vocabulary, guys. What don't we understand? Any words here? Demise. Okay, demise is a good word. Does anyone know what demise means? Nobody? Um, can anyone have a guess just by the context? Death? Yeah, exactly. Death, basically. Um, the extinction or demise or death of humanity. Okay. Any others? Vault. Okay, vault is a pretty important one in this section. Who knows what a vault is? Vault is like a... Um, well, when I, when I see the word, I picture like a chest. Something that... Uh, well, not like a chest, like a room that protects... That it's a very secure and protects something that is inside of it. Like exactly the, right. Like in the bank, yep. the money it's, it's in vault. Yeah. Exactly right. Thank you, Julio. So it's um, basically a room or a box or some kind of very strong place that protects something. Um, so in this case, it's a big, big underground. Normally, vaults are underground. Um, so it's a place where you can store things, protect things. Um, any other words? No? Crops. Okay. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Which one did you say crops? Was that the one you wanted, Ginny? Yes. Okay, crops. What is a crop, guys? Anyone? Yeah, crop. It's um, uh, it's um, where when you grow vegetables or certain kind of plants, they all are grouped together, and that it's a crop. Thank you, Julio. Right, like That's a great circle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. A crop is basically just a plant that is grown by farmers to eat. Okay. Um, so, for example, wheat or corn. Um, oh. I'll just say a quick hello to a new student who's just joined us, and I have no idea how to say your name. I would guess it would be like Joao. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Okay, great. Hi, Joao. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. What about you? I'm well, thank you. Um, you've just joined us. Have you been following what we're doing? Yes. Excellent. So Janine's just started by reading this article on the world's most endangered food. And since you've just arrived, I'm going to ask you if you could continue reading for us, please. Um, have you got the... can you see what we're reading? Yeah, I can see. Excellent. So if you could read here from Due to the Cold, please. On to you. Um, to trust? Just until here, I think, until the end of saving. Okay. Due to the cold temperatures within the mountain, the vault is electricity. Cold fell for decades before the seeds perished. The seeds come from all over the US, Russia, North Korea, and beyond, with no regard for political borders. Boundaries. 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 The seats are all getting along fine. There has been no fighting yet. Jokes, Carrie Fowler, an agriculturist, agriculturalist who designed the seed vault and it's currently her uh, he, head of its adviser council. 
and it's also a signal of the desire to the Global Crop Diversity Trust. Oh, I think it would be difficult to tell the history of humankind without reference to what is that room follow continues. These varieties are survivors. They are the ones our ancestors demand worth of saying of of saying. Thank you. Okay, so um I just want to talk to you about the pronunciation of a few words, okay? Okay. So if you just want to repeat them after me, this one here is electricity. Elect electric sorry? Electricity. Electricity. Perfect. Well done. Okay, good. This one here is decades. Decades. Good. And perished. Perished. Excellent. Okay. What else did I have down here? Um, one I need I helped you with here was just boundaries. Boundaries. Mm -hmm. And this one is tricky. This one is an agriculturalist. Agriculturalist. Very good. Excellent. Okay. One more. Thank you. Okay. Advisory. Advisory. Yeah, and then there was advisor somewhere as well. The same. All right. Thank you. Um, that was great reading, Joao. So let's just um, ask if anyone has any questions about vocab. Yes, I have one. Mm -hmm. It's perished. Okay, does anyone know what perished means? Um, the same that dies. Exactly, die. It means okay. the same as die. Any others? No? Sorry, sorry. Could we could, could we say this uh, for decades before the seeds demised? No, um, you can't use demised in that way. You can say the seeds death if you want to change it. Um, or oh no, hang on, sorry, that's incorrect. The false electricity could fail for decades before the seeds died. Um, but demise is not used in that way. Usually we use it in the sense that it's a noun. So it's a bit of an unusual one. You can't to demise. Um, let me have a think about that and see if I can give you a bit more specific. But you can't say demised, no. You could say died. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Um, any other questions? No? All right, so I'm going to ask. We've read a little bit, given us a bit of an introduction. Um, who can I ask? I'm going to ask Mauricio. Mauricio, can you give us a little bit of a summary? What have we learned so far? What have we read? Uh, that. Oops. <laughs> uh, let me think. Uh, Mm. Well, there, there, there is a, there is a place designed to mm -hmm. save, uh, to save seeds uh, for the extinction, for their extinction. Yeah. That is in yeah. that is in in a remote in the remote Norwe Norwegian, in an archip archipelago located near the North Pole. Correct. And okay. Uh, well, the due the cold temperatures, the um, the seeds has have been uh, protected. Yes. Mm, and uh, what else? Um, and, he, and they are also protected by 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 an adverse advisory council called the Global Crop Diversity Trust. Absolutely, that was a really great summary. Thank you, Mauricio. Um, Thank you. Did anyone know that we had this in the world? Because I sure didn't. I didn't know too. You Me didn't either. know either. Uh -huh. It's kind of weird, hey. Um, and yeah. what do you think about what do you think about it, Joao? Mm. Is it a good idea? 
I don't have a good idea right now. I'm <laughs> thinking about it. It's new to me. Absolutely, yeah. I, I suppose it is a good idea. I mean, I just, it's, it's surprising that we did this, but I suppose this sounds like a good idea. Let's continue reading and see what happens next. So I'll just say hi to David, who just joined us a few moments ago. Hi, David. Hi, teacher. How are you? Fine, thanks. Good. I hope you're following okay. I'll give you a chance to get um, settled into the class, and I'll ask Julio to read for us. I'll come back to you, okay? Okay. All right, so Julio, from not all, please. Sure. Not all things we have been so well preserved. However, throughout history, foods have evolved and flowed in popularity and abundance, and few have even disappeared. Compared to hi historic records, 86% of apple varieties grown in the U.S. alone are gone. For example, old Cornish, mm -hmm. Cornish cauliflowers are extinct, as is the unsold pear which peer experts back in the 19th century described as having a delicious, buttery flavor. <laughs> Keep going. How does a perfectly delicious food begin to march toward extinction? And what is being done to tackle the problem? Thank you, Julio. Okay, so a few little um, words that were tricky for you. This one here is ebbed. Ebbed. Yes. Ebbed. Um, ebbed. And then this word here um, is not peer, so just be careful. Um, it's pronounced the same as, for example, a pair of shoes. The same pronunciation. Oh, okay. So with American pr pronunciation, you've got more of an R sound, a pair. Um, but I have a British accent, so I pronounce it pair. But be careful, it's not the same as peer which is there. I've just given you the difference in the chat box there. You can check that out. Apart from that, great reading. Um, any vocab, guys? Do we understand everything? Does ebbed. anyone know what... Yeah, I was just going to say that, Janine. Ebbed yeah. and flowed. What does ebbed and flowed mean? Well, I know that ebbed is uh, decline. Yes, exactly. And so I want to think that flow is the opposite. You're correct, yep. So this is kind of a collocation. If something ebbs and flows, um, it means it goes up and down, basically. So it's gone up and down in popularity. Sometimes it's popular, other times it's unpopular. Any others? No? Okay, so Cornish is is um, something from Cornwall, which is actually in the UK, so I know that one. And the place is Cornwall. It's a county of the UK. Um, so I never knew about old Cornish cauliflowers, but they're extinct, so it's too late for me to find out about them anyway. All right, let's have a look. We've got a, a bit of a weird-looking photo. Um, and that, according to the caption, is the seed vault. So there you go. In case you're wondering. Um, and let's have a look and see whose turn it is to read. It must be Krishan's. Krishan, can you read for us from We Tend to Think, please? Yes, sure. Are you there? We don't yes. yes. Yes, okay. We tend to think that a tomato is a tomato. A carrot, a carrot. But over the years, farmers have introduced new genetic. It is sorry, it is rations of both. Sorry, can you please help me? Iteration, iterations. It iterations, iterations of both crop and livestock. The the wheat used to make bread today, for example, is different than the wheat used 20 years ago in that same recipe. Moreover, just like dogs, 
there can be many different of breeds or in the case of crops varieties within a single species keep going okay but mass production in farming has caused a homogenization of certain foods people started using just a couple of breeds for whatever they are doing meat milk eggs or fibers in order to get the same seized animals to fit on an assembly line for processing and transportation and more importantly to make them grow as quickly as possible explained ryan walker marketing communication communication manager at the us based livestock conservancy agriculture today is all a number game thank you krishan great reading just one or two little um words that were tricky so let's just practice this one again this is iterations iterations yes we'll talk about the meaning of that in a okay. moment this is species okay. or species species correct this one's quite tricky this is homogenization homogen homogenization genization homogenization homogenization yes correct well done and then the last one here this is sized okay. sized animals Okay, sized animals. Yep, exactly. This is not right. seized. This is no, this is sized. Seized is something else. Seized, I'll type in the chat box for you. It means to grab something, to pick up something. Okay, got it. Got it. All right. Thank you. All right, thank you, Krishan. So um, we'll go back to iterations because this is probably a word that you're unfamiliar with. Does anybody know what it means? Mix some genetic thing. Yes, so you can kind of get the meaning from the context. You're right there, Joel. But what does the word itself mean? It's not to do with genetics. It's so. Uh... You know, Julio. No, no, really. no, I was trying to guess, but no. No, okay, it's a bit of a confusing one. It basically just re re means repeat. So repeats. We usually use this word in the sense that we say reiterate. If you reiterate something, it means that you repeat it um, to make it clearer. Um, so you might say this, for example, I just want to reiterate my point. It means that you're going to say it again in a different way and try and get more people to understand it. So it means repeat. Are there any other confusing words? No? All right, we're doing well, everybody. Great. I'm going to ask Janine. Janine, can you tell me what... Can you explain in your own words what these two paragraphs have been talking about? What happens? Um, I think it's talking about DNA modification um, in the vegetables and yep. food. And Absolutely. We we don't eat many variety of the same fruit. We just eat the same breed the same kind of tomato, the same kind of carrots. So Correct, these, that's absolutely right. Why? Because it's easier to produce and to distribute the transportation. Yes, exactly right. Um, so it's to do with um, being more efficient, right? Um, it says down here which is probably the key point. Um, if we take time trying to grow lots of different stuff, we can't get as much out of it because it takes longer. It's more complicated. Yeah. Um, so it kind of comes down to money, I suppose. But thank you, Janine. Great summary. Well done. 
Okay, so it must be Mauricio's turn to read from in North America, please, Maurice. Yes, from from where to where? Um, just these two paragraphs here, please. Okay. In North America, for example, myriad cattle varieties used to be raised. Today, a single breed, Holstein Freisch, Freischens, Freischens, account for 90% of dairy cattle raised in the U.S. and another 4% are Jersey cattle. All the other dairy breeds occupy the remaining 6% silver. This change was especially pronounced in the U.S., but it also took place and is still taking place around the world. Today, around 20% of the world's 8,000 livestock breeds, which include a dozen animals ranging from cows to sheep to ducks to rabbits, are in danger of extinction. Thank you, Mauricio. Really great pronunciation. Well done. This word here is a type of cow, and it's pronounced Frisian. Oh, Frisian. Frisian. Yeah, so Frisians are the black and white ones. And the Jersey cattle are the kind of golden brown color that gives the really creamy milk, um, which I know because in New Zealand we have a lot of dairy farming. Um, and the other word here, the only other word, Mauricio, was dozen. Has an um, a kind of an uh sound. Dozen. 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 Yes, that's better. Great. Um, okay. Okay, so it was quite straightforward, but are there any words that we don't understand in this part, guys? No? Oh, there was another word I've just missed out, Mauricio. This word here is actually sliver, not silver. Sliver. Ah, uh, sliver. <laughs> sliver. Does anyone, do you know what a sliver is? I don't know. No? Anyone know? Anyone can explain it? Please. No? Mm -hmm. No. I don't know. Okay. A sliver is basically just a very, very thin slice. Very thin piece. So if you say, can you give me a sliver of cake, then you're probably on a diet. I never asked for a sliver myself. I always want a big piece. Okay. <laughs> a nice picture of a cow's tongue there. Um, it gives you a little caption. These are the Frisians that are raised in the U.S., also in New Zealand. So they're good at, good at giving milk. Probably the best, I guess. That's why we've got them. Okay, so it must be Raphael's turn. Raphael, could you go for these two paragraphs for me, please? So what's the rarest food source? It's difficult to answer simply because there are so many of them, but there are some strong contenders. In the crop section, some Asian apples in the U.S. grow on a single specimen tree. Others, such as the American chestnut and chico beans, once apples, are not too rare to be marketed. Turning to livestock, only around 150 Arapawa goats exist, while about 90 midget white turkeys previously thought to be extinct, were just rediscovered in Alabama. Carry cattle, however, probably take the price for the for rarest livestock, just 93 animals still exist. Many endangered varieties are unique to a single local region, having never expanded beyond that community's confines. When small farms or backyard operations shudder or decide to switch to conventional breeds, the local varieties disappear. As a result, compared to pre-1900, about 75 of no, yes, 1900, about 75 of global farm plant diversity is gone. For all, for order of the diversity stored within the seed vault, many more strains have gone extinct, and more still are on the verge of extinction. If we don't grow it, we lose it says Richard McCarty, executive director of Slow Food USA, and we've lost so many crops already. Thanks, Raphael. Really great reading. Um, the odd word through here. So the first one is staple, and I'm just trying to find where it is now, actually. 
There it is. Staple. Um, do you want to repeat it, Raphael? Staple. Yeah, perfect. And um, this one here, with the when we have an R E at the beginning, it needs to be pronounced with the long E, so it's rediscovered. Rediscovered. Yeah, there you go. That makes um, it's the same for every word with re in front of. And here we have not live stock, but livestock. Okay, livestock. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Um, since we're talking about this word here, what does it? What is a staple in this context? Well, a staple it's a uh, a small little piece of metal that's used to uh, attach one thing to another. But, that is exactly uh, right, Julio. But here but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> In this context, I think it means that it is. It used to be uh, very common, or you can say it was. Um, um, how, how do you say that was um, something that they used every day, like. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, like what's part of their their diet of the everyday basis. Exactly. That's what it's talking about here. So yes, as well as being something you use to attach pieces of paper together, this is a different context. So it's talking about the main or the most important crop in this case. So the staple of your diet, for example, in Asia is, is rice, usually. In other countries it varies. Um, just to give you a vague idea, I don't want to be generalizing, but um, just so that you get the idea of what staple is. Um, any other vocabulary? There's quite a few little weird words in here, so do tell me if you want to exp uh, talk about any of them. No? Everyone's too too nervous or in, extremely intelligent. I don't know <laughs> what this is. I'm get it's some kind of a plant. If anyone knows, does anyone know what a chinquapin is? No. Well, no, we can all look that up on Google. Um, a chestnut's pretty common though. A chestnut no. is something that you have at Christmas, right? <laughs> you roast it on the fire. Um, and you also have turkeys at Christmas, at least in my country. <laughs> so there's just some little food words there. Everything else okay, guys? We're doing great today, unless you're just too nervous to ask me. No? All right, so we're going to carry on reading. And I'll ask David. David, could you continue, please, from So Why? What's here? Okay. Thank you. So why does it matter if a few varieties of kale and obscure breeds of pigs fall by the wayside? The argument for preserving food di diversity overlap with those for preserving ecological diversity in the, wa in the world. The planet is constantly in a state of flux now more so than ever. The climate is warming and the weather patterns are shifting. Plants too will need to change in order to keep up. But domesticated crops are at an exceptional disadvantage. Disadvantage. Yes. Their evolution is largely in our selective hands and we've tailored then toward pro profiting favoring traits such as high yield and durability rather than adapt, ad, adapt, adaptability. When a new pest, disease, or drought comes, drought. 
drought, drought, drought comes. Do you want a crop that is that is best? There is more chemicals on crops Oops. and increase. Mr. Line, Mr. Line, David here. Yeah. Do you want a crop that is that is pest and disease resistant and drought. drought and drought tolerant, or do you want to just put more chemicals on crops and increase irrigation? Fowler poses. The choice seems pretty clear to me. Keep going, David, that last sentence. Okay. Div diversity, he continues. He continues. Is the most effective, easiest, cheapest, and most sustain sustainable way to help agriculture adapt to change. Thank you. Well done. There was definitely some tricky words in here. Um, so let's talk about a few of them. This one's wild. Wild. Perfect. This one you got there in the end, but it was a bit tricky, so let's practice. Disadvantage. Disadvantage. Yes, so it's the opposite of advantage. Um, and then this one here came up a couple of times, so it's drought. Drought. Yes. Continues. Continues. Exactly. So the E isn't pronounced there. It's as if it was just you. And this last I one said here. Continuous. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. Continues. Um, and the last one here. Just get the ch sound nice and strong. Otherwise, it, it sounds a little bit dodgy. So cheapest. Cheapest. Yeah, that's much better. Well done. Okay, so let's talk Oops. about vocabulary, guys. There's a few in here, sh I think. Anyone want to ask any vocab questions? Teacher, a pronunciation is climate or clima climate? Climate. Climate. The climate. Okay, climate. Thank you. No problem. Who else wanted to ask something? Um, uh, we could we could say could we say uh, the planet is constantly in a state of fluency instead of flux? Um, not really. Fluency is is slightly different. So flux really means change, Mauricio. So you could say the planet is constantly in a state of change. Mm. Um. That's kind of what it's talking about here. So fluency is not quite the same meaning. Um, you could sort of use, say maybe like fluidity, I suppose, but it's still not exactly the same. So maybe change is the best synonym. Okay, see. Thank you. Thank you very much. No problem. Any other questions? Fall by the wayside. Haha, <laughs> that's a great one. Write this one down. Julio, do you know this one? <laughs> I'm trying Which to find it now. Fall by the wayside. Here we go. Idiom for Julio or anyone else who wants to learn it. Do you know this one, Julio? Uh, fall by the wayside. Mm. <laughs> it's a new one. <laughs> oh, uh. yay. Okay. <laughs> Does anybody know what it means? Or can, they, can anyone guess? Because it's not too hard to guess. No? If something falls by the wayside, it basically gets left behind. Um, okay. I'm gonna write it down. So it's like, like um, the side of the road. It's like it falls on the side of the road, and you continue walking. So it gets left behind. Okay. It's quite a nice one. The it's actually quite common as well. It is forget or it is extinct. Um, it doesn't have a specific meaning, really, um, in that way. It could be anything. It just means that it gets left behind, gets forgotten about, gets becomes non-current, I suppose. So it loses its currency. Can I understand this word like saying that this... 
breeds of pigs will be extinct? Yeah, so in this particular context, yes, it is talking about becoming extinct because that's what we're talking about. But it can be used in other contexts as well. It just means something that's it's no longer important um, or it has disappeared. Yeah, so it has it's quite a wide meaning. But yep, in this case, it means that the pigs have gone extinct. Okay. Any other questions? No? All right, so we'll just go back because um, Janine gave us a really great summary of the first part from here. Um, and I think this part's relatively straightforward. That it talks about um, the cattle varieties that are used in the US. So let's go down to here and um, We'll just do each paragraph. I just want to ask you to give me like the main idea of what's in the paragraph. So let's ask Raphael first of all. Raphael, for this paragraph, can you give me a real quick summary? What does it tell us? Uh, from this paragraph, there are so there are so many species of endangered animals, and they, it's hard to 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 measure, you know, it's hard to. Uh, let me see. Yes, this paragraph tells about the number of species in danger, and they and some species are, are they are so there are so few animals in, in some species. There, it's hard to find it. It's hard to be in market. Absolutely. Exactly right. Thank you, Raphael. Um, Mauricio, can you give me a little summary for this paragraph? What does this tell us? Yes, yeah, that, that we need to protect the local, the local varieties. Otherwise, uh, we, can, we can miss it. We can, we can lose them. Exactly. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. That's basically it. Um, I like the way his company is called Slow Food USA as opposed to Fast Food. <laughs> um, so yeah, obviously that's the opposite of McDonald's. Um, and then this question is important. Why does it matter? Why does this matter? Does it matter if we, if some stuff goes extinct? So then it answers this question here. And I'll ask um, David, can you summarize this part for us. What does this make? What's it saying? Well, <laughs> sometimes I read. And, and you didn't I take in the meaning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I completely understand. Sorry, my fault. Because I'll ask. I'll come I back to you. I focus in the pronunciation. Yes, I know. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. I'll ask Joao. Joao, can you help him out? What's it? What was it saying? No, teacher, me neither. I'm just in. I I, I have a lot <laughs> of the words that I could not understand, but I'm just focusing in the pronunciation. Sorry. Okay, no problem. Would anyone like to volunteer? How about Janine? Janine, can you give us a little summary? Well, I'm passing through these problems too. I'm mm -hmm. focused on pronunciation, but I think I got something in the text. Go for it. Just tell me what you got. Um, it's talking about um, their, the breeds, the crops. Um, they are, they have to, um, I don't know the word in English. I'm sorry. That's okay. It's, just tell me what you can. So, what did you understand from this paragraph? But it kind of answers this question: Why is it important? Why, like, why does it matter that we're losing um, some species? Can you give me any reasons why it matters, or does it matter? Maybe it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, okay. Yeah, go for it, Julio. Okay. Well, I just think that the reason why it's hard to summarize the paragraph. It, is because it gives a, a kind of a complex explanation, but Absolutely. if you wanna, but <laughs> basically it says that um, the planet is constantly is constantly changing, 
Yes. So we don't know what kind of adversity we are going to face in the future. So what they want to do is just keep a great pool of different crops so in the future if something comes up they are able to plant them again and they want to have a high diversity of these crops because they want to in some way they want to find uh, they want to create a diverse um, grow a, a diverse crop you know the, the different kind of uh, plants and with different features that might adapt better in the future and, Absolutely. and I, I guess that that's the point of why they want to keep a lot of these seeds and crops uh, saved for the future. Yes, thank you Julio, that was perfect. Um, I'll just, I know that this is a little bit of a tricky paragraph, you're right. I think, I guess that this kind of summarizes it in a way. So as you just said, it's the more diversity we have, um, the more likely crops will be able to adapt to changing circumstances in the future. Um, so if the world changes, then if we have more plants at our disposal, then we're more likely to be able to continue growing something of them, even if our world climate changes or other things happen. Um, so... It, it also says that it's it's the same argument for ecological diversity, so in other areas, why we need to keep as many animals alive as possible, um, so that we can basically continue to exist. Um, so we've got a couple more minutes left of class. I just want to ask if anyone wants to tell me um, their opinion. What do you think about this whole topic? Does anyone have anything to say about it? Uh, furthermore, there is also uh, a matter of food production because uh, I, I think I think uh, they are more concerned in increase their food production. Um, so they trying to choose the right uh, the right not right species, not the right uh, can I say uh, the right. Awesome. Right, uh, right types of food, you know, uh, food when we can produce more, you know, just to attend, just to attend the, the people, uh, because, uh, in my opinion, uh, types of food that that are not uh, types of food that are not uh, maybe there there are some types of food that are more interesting to produce rather than other types of food because uh, just like because they can produce more then then they can use better techniques to increase their production in order to in order to feel the necessity of uh, of humanity you know related to food yeah absolutely Raphael so I think it's sort of an um, almost like a a conflict between efficiency and making money and and giving people enough food now and protecting everything for future events and it's a little bit like this um, but thank you everyone for reading we're gonna have to finish now I don't want to be late finishing in case you need to go to another class um, but thank you really really great reading today from all of you and um, I hope to see you all again soon um, have a great afternoon, evening, or morning, wherever you are, um, and take care, all of you. Take Bye care. Thank you very Bye. much. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.